Welcome to Lightroom. Why am I messing up? What's up, guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I have noticed something. Whenever I, I produce videos on Capture One, I really don't get the views. But then I have people telling me, oh, hey, when can you put out a Capture One video? When can you do this Capture One? When can you do that Capture One? But I still don't get the views on Capture One. I don't know. Are you guys not so interested in using Capture One? Or am I not teaching it well? Which is which? Just let me know down in the comment section below. And oh, hey, I'm trying out this new audio setup I just got. So just let me know down in the comment section box below if the audio is good. And maybe I might just keep it. I got these images from Mr. Shots. I'm going to leave his handle down in the description box below. And also probably just pull up that Instagram pop-up thing I, I like to do <laughs> whenever I do some editing down here. Mr. Shots, amazing photographer here in Ghana. I saw this video on his reel but i didn't see pictures on his instagram the model is very beautiful i like the whole setup it screams of a lot of color and these days we are in that phase of color grading everyone is so much engulfed in how to color grade what to do to color grade how to mix colors and all that you might ask why this mode why am i not seeing the lightroom to be exposed so there are different modes to using your Lightroom, when you tap or hold L on your keyboard, it sends you into different viewing modes. This is just a regular one. This is, I think, half uh, dark view, and this is like the full dark view or dark mode, or whatever mode you call it. I like this whenever it is I'm done coloring and all, just because this is Instagram. Ah, uh, dark mode. Okay, so let's take a look at the images. This these images were shot with the Canon 6D, so I like that challenge there. This was shot with a 35 millimeter lens. There's also 35. There's the 85, and this also is the 85. I think this is the EF Canon 85 1.8 lens. I'm surprised the colors came out good, and this is the Sigma 35 1.4 lens. Shot at f4. Yeah, I think all of them were shot at f4. Okay, let's start. Let's start off with this. This is the image I want to edit. So here in Lightroom, I might probably be selling off my presets once a while when I'm, when I'm talking about whatever it is I'm doing. But first off, we'll, we'll enter into profiles. Whenever it is I'm editing Lightroom, if you've been with me on the journey of Lightroom discovery, you definitely know I like to change my profiles. And that being said. I'm still selling my TJD color profiles. I have some of them out for sale. Not all of them here are for sale. I think there are five or six out for sale. Down in the description box below, there's a link. Check it out, my web store. And this is the TJD grade. I think that one, that one is for the wedding presets. They also work. Let's just close that. Let me just let me shamelessly plug myself and run through some of the color profiles that are being sold. So this is the TJD Amaro. This is what it does to the image. This is a TJD film. TJD Juno, Greta. And I think I did the Greta for dark skin models. And there's a TJD moon. I love the moon. When, I mean, when you fix some adjustments to it, it becomes better. There's a neutral. I think I put out the neutral for free sometime. And there's a portrait and there's a pro and there's a standard. Standard works all the time. Let us know what you're doing here. We are not selling my profiles. I'm still selling them anyways. So camera matching, all I have to look for is the camera standard. The camera standard automatically changes my image from this to looking like this already. So I have some yellows popping out more. I have some reds in the shadows. I mean, all you have to do is take notice of whatever it is that has changed. So if I hold Y on the keyboard, this is the before and this is the after. A couple of things have changed. There's much more contrast in this. So we're just going to fix that soon. But first off, let me head on the transform. Oh, let's not do that. If I fix the crop, if I fix the crop, I lose the leg. So pardon me, I'm not going to fix the crop. I mean, he could have taken a step back to show the full length. So I'm not going to fix the crop. I'm not going to rotate the image in any way. What I will do is to actually 
fix or enable my lens profile correction, remove chromatic aberration, and use the available new tools in Lightroom. I don't know the title for this video, but let's find out. Let's both find out ourselves at the end of the video. So I'm going to use the content aware. This is a new tool here in Lightroom and I have been using it for some time now. Believe me when I say it really works. I really hate these cables whenever it is I'm shooting outdoors. But because there's a feature like content aware now, I am not scared. Because with these things, I would have ended up in Photoshop and we removed them, be removing them in Photoshop. I didn't like how the healing brush tool worked here in Lightroom. But now, I love it. One thing I like about this also is whenever it is you make the adjustment and the healing or the, the content I wear to doesn't pick up where you want it to pick up, you can use or you can select a portion of the image, then the content I wear reads that information and fixes your image for you. More on this video on the Lightroom channel or there are many other technical videos on how the content I wear works. All you have to know is it works exactly as that in Photoshop. The next thing we have to do after changing or after removing our lines and after changing the profile is to fix our white balance. Now to look for a gray point is a problem. So I'm going to be sampling certain parts of the image. It's just try and errors to get our image in the direction we want. Because looking at this, this was shot at a very warm temperature. So I am going to go with this. Let's see, this is the before and this is the after. Before and after. Too cold, if you ask me. So let's bring it back to 5,200. Or is it? Yeah, 5,500. We have our image here now. Next thing I want to do, if you take a look at this, we have much more information in our shadows than in our midtones and in our highlights. I always tell people when it comes to color grading, make sure you shoot a wall and the exposed image. I feel he was exposing for this side of our subject just because he was shooting this from the side with respect to where the light was positioned. I mean, you can't control the natural light. You can't control the sun. You can work with the sun. So the sun was coming in from this direction giving us this beautiful side lighting as we're seeing and the direction in which he shot became a side lighting of course so exposing for the shadows literally did whatever it is happened so there was no under exposure being i mean under exposure happening here so i'm going to do that here in post reduce the exposure reduce our highlights bring back the exposure a little bit I mean, I don't like to see most of my white so minus this is fine open up the blacks should we play with the shadows no I'm going to keep I'll keep it here and I'll add contrast using the dehaze slider adding contrast using the dehaze slider usually adds color to your image Let's reduce the clarity and reduce the vibe. I mean, the saturation. So, minus 10 should be fine. And this is what we've done so far. So, this is the before, this is the after. So, color correction. After white balance color correction, of course, after exposure basic fix and after changing the camera profile. Next thing I want to do is to come into my tone curve and create another SKF to give me the contrast I'm looking for. If I have never explained the calibration for you to understand what the calibration tool is about, let me see if this one helps. So when you pick the camera at the basic level, at the root level, there are three primary colors that combine or work together to give you the colors you see on your image. The camera calibration is the tab that manipulates these colors at the root level in your image. 
the hsl doesn't do the same job as the camera calibration when i reduce overall saturation over here right everything goes to black and white let's undo that when i reduce overall saturation in just my reds i still have an amount of color in there mind you we've removed the reds but we still see some amount of reds greens and blue just because when you pick up your red primary you have equal amount of um yellow you have equal amount of green and blue in your image when you go to the green also you have the same thing when you go to the blue primary you have the same results so increasing saturation if you ask me i'd prefer you come do it here in the camera calibration than in any of the other available tabs either the hsl or the basic adjustment tab so i'm going to reduce the saturation here in my green primary for all those who don't know the green primary sets on your skin tone range so if you are looking at making say a skin look reddish yellowish we have that quality control at the green primary than any other primaries let's put some greens into the shadows now to our hsl tab what i like to do in my hsl tab is to manipulate hue saturation and luminance just so they sit right in the image the first thing i want to do is to make sure i have more greens than yellow so with my yellow slider i am going to move the yellow towards the green right and they look vibrant enough so i'm going to reduce the saturation i want it to sit well in the image then i'll reduce the luminosity when it comes to the hue of my greens i don't see any yellow tints in them so i'll move them more into the greens reduce the saturation and reduce this luminosity also with my reds let's see let's make it more reddish than yellowish so i I'll, I'll let it sit somewhere here and reduce the saturation of course so so far this is what we've done if you can see when it comes to my blues i'm going to push them up blue and cyan and reduce my purple and my magenta okay so we are headed somewhere with respect to hue let's deal with the luminance of our oranges first so if i bump it up that's what happens if i reduce it this is where i am at so let's send the hue of the orange towards the reds a little bit then see to it that the saturation is brought down a little bit So this is where we are at currently. Now to color grading. Color grading helps to create color separation in our image. We have shadows, highlights, midtones, and the global tone in this image. So the global tone, I feel like there's some sort of green hint in our image. So I'm going to move this towards the purple magenta side and give it that color from there. And as you can see there's been a global change already so this is the before and the after now let's come to our shadows let's tackle the various tonal ranges i'm going to push some blues in my shadows to cool down the warmth in the image push some warmth into the midtones i know i just said to cool it down right that doesn't mean i won't push some in there then in my highlights let's add some teal this is where the image is setting i would like to move the blending to say 60 and the balance towards my shadows rather than the highlights i want you to see more of the cooling feature in the image so this is where we are at in my tone curve i am coming to push some blues into the shadows more 
so we'll create the point here and lift up the blues in my shadow one thing i like about the point curves is that whenever it is you create a curve adjustment or whenever it is you do an adjustment the ripple effect happens all over the other various tones so the highlights your whites your mid tones and your shadows and your darks whenever it is you do an adjustment say in your darks there's that little minor ripple effect happening just so that it balances out throughout the image and if you don't want that you can equally send it back to where it was so this is me doing that now we have our image moving from this to looking like this All right so for our effect i'm going to add some greens to this increase the size and increase the roughness I don't like to see sharpness in my images, so I remove the sharpening, then come back to the basic and reduce the clarity. So there we have this image looking like this. So we moved it from this to then making it look like this using color correction, using color grading, using a tone curve and using how your understanding of what to remove and what not to remove. I want to quickly mention this Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Classic. The features you see over here are the same features you are going to see in Adobe Camera Raw. So for all those who keep on asking if the presets, the Lightroom presets will work for Adobe Camera Raw, yes, they are of the same engine. The only difference you'll be seeing in there is the name, right? So you have instead of hsl you're going to see color mixer that's the only difference i think so far i have seen yeah so that is that we can do more so I'm back in the tone curve i'll come to my parametric curve and here in my parametric curve i am going to reduce the highlights right and open up my lights a little bit and in my index and maybe my shadow no, not, not my shadow. Let's lift up the darks a little bit over here. Let's give it, I think, two is fine. And we can come into the red or, red or green channel and do a couple of adjustments if you want. So I like to always play with the mid-tones rather than any other side. So mid-tones, create a little s -curve. the greens i'm okay i'm not going to oh i will okay so far so good before and after before and after let's reduce this a little bit more and okay so this is what we've done so far now let's use a couple of the new masking tools in the new lightroom to create some interesting stuff all right so i'll click on sky and let's see if it will mask the sky and if it does mask the sky which it has so if it marks the sky that's beautiful what we can do is to make it more bluish right just to bring the color in there add some tint to it so bluish tint and a little bit of saturation or well, let's reduce the saturation and we can change the hue of it let's see adding some contrast Let's reduce the shadows, a little bit of clarity. Let's dehaze it. Hmm. Okay, a tad bit of white and blacks. Let's reduce the saturation. I don't think I want to see. Okay, okay. 
all right so that is that for that masking we can do more so i can have select people as a new mask and i am going to select the whole and like the entire human being uh, if you want a full crash course on the whole selection new thing in lightroom there are many other videos to do that i am not here to teach about that so after creating a max from this i'm going to invert the selection because i want to play with the background and not my main subject what i'll do is to reduce the exposure a little bit and maybe bump or drop down the clarity to make i think bumping up the clarity works reduce the texture and maybe a little bit of the saturation let me see if i play with a hue if it will work mm. if i play with a hue it will work okay okay all right this is enough playing so this is where we started from and this is where we ended at very beautiful looking image i'm going to copy this without the mask and i'm going to paste it on this and let's see if you're going to get a massive effect i love it already guys i love what i'm seeing so there's one thing i said with respect to the moon i'm going to reduce bring back the yellows a little bit because i feel the green is too much there's one thing i said with respect to using the profiles right so with my profiles if you've already made the adjustments maybe you use the camera standard to make the adjustments you can use the profiles to bump up the image so i'm going to use the moon for this because the moon transcends everything and the next thing i'll do is to reduce how much of the moon i want in the image and voila i have this beautiful looking image which has been transformed from this to this so the transformation happened with the copying of the adjustments and the addition of the moon profile so changing the profile from camera standard to the moon profile i think that's it that's it for today's video let me highlight the two images we edited or oh, better so let me copy let me copy this and maybe paste it on this one let's see how it will change it i like i like the change let me reduce this when i have time i'll remove the cable lines but for the purpose of the tutorial i don't want this video to drag itself so let's select the ones we've edited hold n on the keyboard let's hide this and let's go into our favorite viewing mode l and l again so this is a dark mode and if you want to see if you have any effects or problems happening in your image maybe in the darks or how anybody is going to see the image using their dark mode feature on their phone this might probably help so this is what we edited this is what we edited let's let's give a special thanks to mr shot this image was beautifully captured i like the colors in there if you ask for my suggestion i would have allowed the model put on some white outfit instead of the brown it still works either ways we were able to color the image the way we wanted it and yeah that's it that's that's all i have to say to this but i love the images all the images he sent to me i love them these were my favorite specs and i appreciate the fact that he shared them to me just so that i could create or make this particular youtube video for you guys to watch my subscription status is not promising like i said i'm not going to force you to subscribe but if you like what you see you can you can you can hit the subscribe button and make sure you like this video share this video make a point to visit my web store there are some freebies on my web store and there are some paid ones you can purchase some to support my hustle 
to push me to do more YouTube videos. Thank you so much and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.